Dexit is quite possibly one of the most controversial topics in the history of the Pokemon franchise. As of the making of this video, it's been almost five years since that eventful moment at the Nintendo Treehouse of 2019, and after discussing cross-gen transfer, Pokemon Bank, and similar topics, I thought it would be a good time to talk about this event in particular, my thoughts and feelings on the matter, and solutions I think that the series could be taking that they haven't taken yet. Let's set the stage. Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and Let's Go Pikachu released in November 2018 as the first Pokemon games available for the Nintendo Switch. These games were primarily aimed at bringing in some players from the Pokemon Go phenomenon into the mainline games, and would garner a largely lukewarm reception. These games were not meant to be much more than a stopgap, a way to cash in on the craze of Pokemon Go, migrate some of those players over to the main series games. What people were truly waiting for would be revealed the following year. Pokemon Day, February 2019. Pokemon reveals two new games coming to the Nintendo Switch, Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. These games were supposed to introduce the next generation of Pokemon with the Galar region and would introduce a concept called the Wild Area, a large, vast open area that takes up a large chunk of the region. It wasn't going full open world, but people were mostly fairly excited. The prospect of a brand new generation of Pokemon games on this new hardware, with all the potential that it'd carry, had fans looking forward to what they'd be playing once they got their hands on the game. Fast forward to E3 2019. Pokemon had a big presence at this event, with director Shigeru Omori and producer Junichi Masuda present to answer questions and explain some of the development process behind the games. And that was when the bomb what was that dropped. What for Pokemon Sword and Shield is that players will be able to transfer their Pokemon from Pokemon Home only if they appear in the Galar region Pokedex. For the first time in a new generation of mainline Pokemon games, not every Pokemon could be used in Sword and Shield. This wasn't talking about how in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, you originally couldn't obtain all of the Pokemon, but they were programmed in and they could be brought over from future games. This wasn't even being compared to Pokemon Black and White, where only the new Pokemon could be obtained before the post game, where the rest of the old Pokemon could be found. No, this was full stop not allowing for every Pokemon up to this point being available by transfer or any other means in the next mainline Pokemon games. The internet erupted into discourse. Dexit had begun. The next months leading up to the release saw numerous heated debates on the topic. Fans took to their sides, either defending the decision to cut the Pokedex down and focus on the available Pokemon of a specific game, citing that the practice of having all Pokemon available in one game was untenable. Dexiters would label this decision as Pokemon's biggest mistake yet, with criticisms being raised at how the Pokemon company and its figureheads handled the fallout of the situation. Regardless of what side you might take, it was clear that this was a horribly mishandled PR disaster. Reasons given for the directional change included things like needing to spend more time on animations and models for the Pokemon. Some defenders of the dex cut would establish that the dex cut was necessary for competitive balance, but detractors of that point would argue that having the ability to use all your favorites was more important. And to be fair, Pokemon like Zacian and Caloric Shadow would be introduced with these games. So I'm not sure if balance was really that much of a concern. Over the course of the following year, DLC would be released in two waves, adding in over 200 returning Pokemon with about a dozen or so new Pokemon, either through entirely new species or new Galarian variants. Some fans were ready to move on to a new game by the time this DLC ended, and usually in the mainline games, a new game would also replace the old games for the competitive circuit. But not this time. Sword and Shield would continue to be the premier games for competitive play, Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, and Legends Arceus serving as supplemental games of the generation as revisits to the Sinnoh region. Pokemon Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl only included the original 493 Pokemon from Diamond and Pearl. No new regional variants or anything that existed after the release of Diamond and Pearl were added. Pokemon Legends Arceus, as a fresh new approach to Pokemon games, 
only included 243 of the total Pokemon in order to sculpt the game's world, focusing less on competitive aspects as there's no player versus player battling, and more on story elements. Generation 9 would start with Pokemon Scarlet and Violet in November of 2022, and by now, players would expect that there'd be an emphasis on new Pokemon with a new regional dex, the same amount as previous games, 400 Pokemon. There'd be support for these games months later that added back in another 70 Pokemon, and by the end of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's DLC, there would be an available 730 Pokemon out of a possible 1,025. And yet there's still a small handful of Pokemon that have not been available on the Nintendo Switch at all as of the making of this video. So here we are, five years later after the shockwaves were felt across the community with this new change of direction where the games curate the available Pokemon on a case-by-case -case basis. But how do I personally feel about this controversy? And are there some solutions for the issues that have come up? Let me start by saying I was a Dexeter. That's right. I was on board with the sentiment that it was unjust that they would give at least what I felt were half-hearted excuses as to why not all the Pokemon could make it into Sword and Shield and other games. From Pokemon Pearl all the way to the release of Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, I would get the new Pokemon on launch day with one exception, that exception being Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, because they released on the same day as Super Smash Bros. for Wii U, and I wasn't missing the launch of that. I also got Pokemon Ruby on launch day. It's safe to say I am a diehard fan of the franchise. It's still my favorite franchise, flaws and all, but at the time I was frustrated with this news. I didn't even buy Sword or Shield at launch. I didn't feel the games would be worth it. They looked like the 3DS games, just in HD. And I was already getting a little sick of the style that they had been using since at least the Generation 4 games. Recycling the same models for the Pokemon while not even bothering to include them all. For the first new full generation of games on a home console, well, hybrid, but you get the idea, I wasn't feeling it. Eventually, though, I was hearing through friends and co-workers that they were enjoying the game. So, I caved. I bought Pokemon Sword, and it was fine. I didn't really play through it all in one period, I took a long break, I left the game near the end of the main story, eventually the first DLC, the Isle of Armor, released, and I went back, played through the rest of the main story, played through a bit of the Isle of Armor, dropped the game again, Crown Tundra eventually released, and then I would finally go back and play through the rest of the DLC. I, I did enjoy the game overall for the most part. I think it was fine. I'm still not fond of not having all the Pokemon available in the game, but I've come to accept that a franchise like Pokemon will eventually pass 1,500, 2,000, maybe even 3,000 unique species, all meticulously designed in batches of about 100 at a time. The series is not going to be able to keep up with having everything in a single game anymore. Scarlet and Violet did manage to legitimately address some of the concerns by actually updating some of the models with new, more detailed textures changing certain models. Charizard looks pretty good now. It's not awkwardly flying in place most of the time. Rhyperia has a cool rocky texture on its body. Most steel types now have a really cool metallic sheen to them. Blastoise actually fires Hydro Pump out of its cannons for the first time since the Genius Sonority games. These are all nice updates that have been needed for Pokemon who are looking the same for about a decade. But is there a way to address the elephant in the room? That none of these games can have all the Pokemon present? I believe there is. And that answer lies in the divisive supplemental software that is Pokemon Home. Home is a software that some like and some really don't like. Personally, I like it. I like how organized Pokemon Home is, at least on the Switch version. I like how easy it is to switch between my save files and move Pokemon around without needing a specific cartridge in the system. And I like how much more detailed being able to display your Pokemon is versus Pokemon Bank on the 3DS. But it's not perfect and I think it could do a whole lot more. Home's very weird. There's two versions, the mobile version and the version for the Switch, but they don't have a whole lot in common with each other, other than being able to access the same account's Pokemon. You can enjoy looking at 3D models of your Pokemon on the mobile version. You can move your Pokemon between the various Switch games only on the Switch version. You have a decent amount of box management only on the Switch version. You can trade Pokemon only on the mobile version. Seriously, why is Home like this? I understand that there's two separate teams working on these two separate versions, but wouldn't it make more sense to have some more parity between the two versions? Okay, let's let's move on. How could Home fix the Dexit issue? They could add a battle simulator to Home. 
They could add a feature similar to Pokemon Ami to home. Ways to interact and use your Pokemon beyond just looking at them and sorting them in the boxes. The name Pokemon Home itself implies a place for your Pokemon to live. A home. Unlike the context of Pokemon Bank, which by its name makes it clear it is a storage system almost exclusively, home as a name implies that there should be more to it than that. Taking care of pets happens regularly within a home. Why not Pokemon? Some people have at-home gyms, so why can't Pokemon Home have a battle simulator? These are questions I know fall on deaf ears, but they're still worth asking. I don't think that including a battle simulator would be too much either. They don't necessarily have to allow for the various battle gimmicks across the generations, and the mainline games could still be the premier way to play official competitive games, while introducing that generation's new Pokemon and new gimmicks might be a bit to implement the different moves, but I think it's something they could reasonably invest in. It's been five years since Dexit, and I believe there's still a lot that Pokemon can do to mend this fence. I do recognize and have come to accept that new games just won't be able to have all the Pokemon in them anymore. Still, there's ways they can work around this, and while I don't think they'll do it anytime soon, I think there's options they could weigh to allow for all Pokemon to get the attention they deserve all in one place. Dexit is a moment in time when many fans had to juggle with what made them a fan in the first place, and whether the series going forward was still a series they could enjoy, or would become a series they would be leaving behind, a series they would have to move on from. Years ago, Final Fantasy went beyond its normal scope, with Final Fantasy XI being an online game, and every game since has been far removed from the gameplay of the first 10 entries. These entries do have their differences, true, but at their core, they're all turn-based RPGs, driven by their soundtracks, story beats, party building systems, and a lot more. Games later on might share some DNA of what makes a game a Final Fantasy, but I'm sure many people simply would not have interest, or at the very least, wouldn't quite enjoy new Final Fantasy titles like they did the older ones. That series has left a lot of its older fans behind. I'm one of those fans. I like the older Final Fantasy games. I'm not the biggest fan of the newer ones because of the approaches they take. I can learn to appreciate certain aspects of the newer games, they just don't hit the same. Pokemon Now is not so different. It's a different execution, sure, but we have a similar result. Yeah, I know, the issues with Pokemon are not even close to the same exact issues as Final Fantasy. The message, the idea here, is not so different. Mainline Pokemon games from Red and Green all the way up to Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon allowed you to use any existing Pokemon, but come the time for Pokemon to make the leap to the Nintendo Switch, Dexit would change how people felt about the series. Five years is, again, a long time, and as far as the internet is concerned, an eternity. People are still reasonably upset that they can't use their favorite Pokemon in certain games. And I get it. I was right there with you. I also understand that Pokemon couldn't keep this up forever. Game development is complicated, and every new Pokemon adds exponentially more workload. But I think it might have been a bit too soon. I don't think Sword and Shield merited being the first games to feature this new direction in a full generation of Pokemon games. I don't like that some of my favorite Pokemon aren't in Scarlet and Violet, games that many may despise but beyond terrible performance, actually really enjoy on the content side of things. I understand though that these games can't continue to always have it all. 1,025 unique species, with many of those having form differences, regional variants, is a staggering number. We won't be too far off from approaching 1200, then 1500, then 2000 and beyond. But that doesn't mean that there can't be some form of game, software, something that allows us to interact with all of them. Pokemon Home as an application isn't as terrible as I think some make it out to be, but it has so much more potential. And four years later, we got the ability to change movesets between games and backport them from Gen 9 to Gen 8 cool, I guess. But if we can trade and see 3D models on the mobile app, I don't see why they can't continue to make home better and add more ways to interact with our favorite Pokemon. Pokemon home being cloud-based, well, it sucks. I won't miss words. It sucks for the same reason Pokemon Bank being cloud-based sucks. It would be much better if this software was offline and had updates when needed, but unfortunately I know that that's asking something that they're just not going to go back on. I do still think that more work should be done though regardless. Pokemon will never be the same after Dexit. I myself struggled to look past it, and reflecting on it I think the problems lie in the execution, 
the way that they handled this, the, the way that they responded to the community upset about this, the lack of more effort to remedy this situation afterwards, and just the nagging feeling that the Pokemon company themselves is really just turning a deaf ear to it all. I don't entirely hate Dexit, because realistically, it was inevitable, but I definitely don't hold a high regard for the years following not putting enough effort to get around that inevitability. Maybe one day there'll be some course correction, but until then, eh, I guess my living decks will be on home to look back on my journey so far. Sorry if this video was a bit of a ramble, I just want to get my thoughts out there on Dexit, and I think it was a very touchy subject. I'm sure that there's quite a few things that I said that you'll disagree with in the comments, and feel free to leave a comment on, you know, whether or not the direction that the series has taken with not having every Pokemon every game anymore bothers you in any way, or if you've been able to get past it and still enjoy the games regardless. But I've said my piece. I think that it's unfortunately something that was always going to happen. It sucks. It sucks. It really sucks. But there, that doesn't mean that they can't try to do something to work around it. And I just, I feel like that they, they just haven't fully committed to trying to make those solutions a possibility. Again, I'm sorry for the rambling, I just wanted to get my thoughts out there. I think that this is a very big subject that's worth talking about. But as always, have a great rest of your day, have a great rest of your week. Thanks for tuning in, and see you next video.